Monday. Could have been a long time ago, could have been yesterday, but it was still just a day. The voodoo low of Papa Legba, he was mucking around the swamp. Some say in a place where he should not have been, others say nothing. But one thing for certain about Papa Legba on this day in that place is that he lost his favorite pair of flip flops. <laughs> This is a story of the man who found those flip-flops. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> let me see. Uh, <clears throat> the Pope is most displeased, sir. In fact, he's as mad as pissed. He be pissed. Pissed he be. So tell me something new. His appetites have become monstrous. His dick has become a monster. <laughs> <laughs> the streets are littered with corpses each dawn. He's just trying to have a good time. <laughs> many of the families feel oppressed by his debauchery. <laughs> and many the more reveling, as the Pope is so in need of grace, so much the more flows into the faithful. <laughs> <laughs> What is this? You know, I don't know. What is this, Phil? I, I'm not getting it. What's supposed to be going on here, huh? Manny, baby, what's the get? Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Pope. Julia Roberts <laughs> as his wife. Shrewish. <laughs> <laughs> Madonna as his concubine. Schwarzenegger as the Pope. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know. Uh, Many gotta understand, the Pope back then wasn't like the Popes are today. The Pope back then was a real badass. <laughs> Did he wear a dress? Yeah. Arnold will never go for it. <laughs> At least I'd like to think that he wouldn't go for it. I mean, wouldn't you like to think that, Phil, that Arnold wouldn't wear a dress and all? The movie going public. The movie going public doesn't want to see Arnold wear a dress, even if he would, Phil. All right, all right, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll make it a kind of robe. Even uh, Charlton Heston wore a robe. Heston's a fucking wuss. <laughs> what, what's this other role here? This Lucius Conchetti. Well, he, he's a pimp. <laughs> the Pope's pimp? Well, yeah, he's a, a kind of a combination of uh, pimp and fool. Uh, a court jester. Sounds like kind of a juicy role. <laughs> Who you got in mind? De Niro. <laughs> De Niro and Schwarzenegger. Bobby will never go for it. Oh, yes, he will. Because in the Saturnalia scene, we'll let him improv the Pope will appoint him maestro of the orgy. And we'll let him improvise it. Like in that scene in uh, Cape Fear. The one with Juliette Lewis in the amphitheater? The one where she sucks his thumb? <laughs> What's that an alias? It's back here on uh, page 107. It's an actual historical fact. The Pope invites all the powerful families to the Vatican for a fate, and they have this orgy weekend. The Pope has an orgy? <laughs> yeah, it was uh, actually quite common back then. And not just the servants, but the finest of families. Can you imagine? Whole families? Yeah. Too much lead in their diet? Eh, who's to say? <laughs> <laughs> Picture this. Which separates this particular orgy from the Pope's usual run-of-the-mill orgy is that he gets shit-faced drunk and appoints his pimp, Lucius, maestro of the orgy. The maestro de la squeechimo magnifico. <laughs> <laughs> whose directions, whose sickest whims must be followed under the threat of eternal damnation, not to mention the more mundane tortures beforehand. Anyway, this dwarf Lucius, he's mad, nuts, fruit flies in the attic, bonkers. He's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, well, maybe Dennis Hopper would be better. Manny, Manny, trust me. <laughs> trust me on this one. De Niro will be perfect. Imagine the possibilities. De Niro, the insane dwarf, secretly in love with the Pope's wife. 
and he is transformed into the Maestro della Squichimo Magnifico at the Pope's birthday orgy. <laughs> this would get an X, Phil. It would kill it. X is death. It would die. Manny, Manny, <laughs> Schwarzenegger, Madonna, an orgy. It, it'll be the biggest. A monster. Could anybody not, though? You know, you know yourself. You walk alone through the hood at midnight just to see it. Ah, uh, you're right about that, Phil, but really, what's the point? You know, I, I still think we could be a lyrical, you know, soft about the orgy scene, get it a, get it a hard R. You know, we come in and we do, we do the hard R cut, and then later on when it's released a video, we come back and do a director's cut, see? <laughs> yeah, really, Phil. But what's the goddamn point? Manny, Manny, you of all people asking me what's the point. The man that built an empire juxtaposing teen sex and homicide so teeny boppers could mash at the drive-in movies, you're asking me what's the point? The first billion dollar gross, Manny, that's the goddamn point. Phil. I got money. My great-grandchildren are going to have money, but sometimes things have got to get beyond that. You know, I was thinking, I've been in this business a long time, and when people uh, look back over my body of work when I'm dead and gone, what are they going to see, huh? What are they going to see? I was thinking that it was time to produce something more uh, artful. The leave a legacy. Oh, man. This is going to be artful. We'll get Ridley Scott to direct. We'll get Wexler on photography. It's going to be sex, blood, and art. <laughs> I don't know, Phil. I can't give you an answer. You know, uh, send me some boards so I get a better idea of the flow. I just can't tell shit from this script. <laughs> Man, you know, what could be of a higher nature than the, than the Pope's birthday orgy? Tastefully done and all. I mean, <laughs> naked dancers. We'll, we'll, we'll choreograph the whole thing. We'll make it. We'll make it a statement about uh, uh, the corruption of voyeurism. <laughs> voyeurism. Yeah, the Pope. Uh, the Pope is a voyeur. He uh, never fucks. He just watches it. Yeah, but you're putting the audience in the position of voyeurism, and then you're telling them they're demented for coming to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. And they'll be forced to agree that the Pope is even more corrupt than the mad Lucius Conchetti, who is conducting a sexual symphony of unprecedented debauchery, because the Pope, he likes to watch it. And it's like corruption on a whole new level. Yeah, Phil, but you're telling the audience that they're fucked up for coming to see my movie, which they might have enjoyed had we not told them how sick they were for coming to see it. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Well, that's it. They'll be forced to agree because that's the way voyeurism works. Uh, wait, I'll have another time. Phil. Uh, no, no, uh, double espresso, shot of anesthet. Uh, twist of orange rind. You know the drill. You got it, Mr. Rizzuto. <laughs> I don't know, Phil. I don't know about this whole voyeurism thing, you know? You know, I was watching the uh, tube the other night, and this feminist type babe came on, and uh, she was talking about. The, uh, she was talking about the difference between a. Uh, well, she was talking about the difference between a look and a leer. Said a leer was sexual harassment. Now, what in the goddamn hell is that? And what good is it you can't. Look, if you can't leer, huh? That's it. That, that's it about this story. Uh, this is going to be art. Big art. Great art. I don't know. Great art, you're saying, is going to be. I don't know. Um, you know that woman over there, she keeps waving and uh, blowing kisses at you? Where? Over there. Oh, God. It's Agnes Bloodle. <laughs> just, just ignore her. Who is she? I don't want to get into it right now. <laughs> Come on. But, you know, you, you, may be, you may be right about that concubine role. You know, Madonna may not be right. Ooh, ooh, we'll get Cher. 
Sarah, she's yeah. such a creature, and her bod is always current. <laughs> 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 we'll get Michael Jackson to play the concubine. I can see it now. Arnold, Arnold in the robe and Michael in drag wearing a charmoose burnoose. What the fuck is a burnoose? I, I don't know. I had a dream once about Sid Charisse and a chartreuse charmoose burnoose, but I still can't remember what a burnoose is. <laughs> She was my analyst. Sid Charisse? No. <laughs> Agnes Bloodle. Yeah? I told you I don't want to talk about it. Well, fine. Let's get back to the script here then. Actually, she was just impersonating a shrunk. Couldn't you tell? <laughs> well, uh, no. I mean, she was nuts, totally deluded. No, I mean, she actually believed she was a psychiatrist. She acted. Uh, I don't know. Uh, she was perfect. No, I couldn't tell. I mean, it was goddamn diabolical. You know? uh, she was insane. I mean, she was institutionalized. I mean, one day, she was in therapy with her shrink. He turns his back. She picks up a paperweight and whops him on the back of the goddamn head and escapes. No shit. Yeah, no shit. You know, later I heard that she uh, tied him up with surgical tubing, uh, rolled up one of his degrees, and buggered him with it before she. <laughs> Yow! <laughs> brutal blunt butt bludgeoning. Yeah, you say that again. Yow! Brutal blunt butt bludgeoning. <laughs> Anyhow, she, uh, she escapes and gets some money from somewhere and uh, sets up a uh, practice in Carmel. And uh, you just found her in the Yellow Pages? <laughs> <laughs> Hell no, Phil. Krista Elgin recommended her last winter when I was suffering from that seasonal affective disorder. <laughs> Said she did wonders for her. Well, how did you find out she was a fraud? <clears throat> She started selling stories about me to the National Enquirer. <laughs> that was her that did that? Shh. <laughs> you're a psychiatrist, but, but isn't it illegal to divulge? Yeah, if you're a psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> but, but couldn't you have her prosecuted anyway? I tried, believe me, only she was supposed to be committed at the time, only she wanted away from the Institute. You know? Well, if she's crazy, why isn't she locked up? Her doctor said that her acting out the role of therapist with me had a salubrious effect on her own therapy. <laughs> <laughs> so they released her, and since, uh, you know, I'm considered a public figure and she was never a licensed physician, Legally, she can say you're right anything she wants about. <laughs> you mean all those stories that I read about you are actually true? <laughs> hey, Phil, yeah, I thought you wanted to work together on this Pope thing. Man, Penny, it, it's a non event. You, you never said a word. Uh, <clears throat> geez, I think she's coming over. Just ignore Manny, baby, it's so good to see you. How's that uh, seven narcissism thing coming, my little thorny flower? <laughs> you don't mind if I sit down, do you? Yeah. Phil, Phil Rizzuto, isn't it? Yeah. Just ignore it, Phil. How's the money store, Phil? Uh, that's a different Rizzuto. <laughs> don't, don't encourage this person. Where's the goddamn man? Uh, Manny, Manny, you don't want to do that, baby. No, I still haven't sold the rights to the really twisted stuff, like the fortnight you spent in Bangkok with that junior high cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> what was the name of? Oopsie, I think. Manny, I have a new respect. Yeah, Manny, that, see, that's what comes to trying to impress your therapist. <laughs> <laughs> you are a sick little pup. I was very impressed. <laughs> what is it you want? Manny, I have never wanted anything other than for us to be the very best of friends. Uh, waiter, waiter, I'd like something to drink, please. I think I want some, uh, do you have something blue? 
This whole thing is going to blow up in your face, Agnes. My lawyers are working on it. Eventually, your ass is mine. I'm going to chuck you back down the booty hat from which you came. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't take that stuff if I were you. No, I've just come to help you. And who better? I know what you need, and baby, I'm here to help you get it. Oh, God. We'll <laughs> be all right, Manny. It'll be fine. My actions are in harmony with the cosmos, and so will be your own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. First off, you got to stop the teenage exploitation garbage you've been turning out. I mean, you got girls all over the country feeling like as soon as their blouses come off, something terrible will happen. It's no way to spend your youth, believe me. Now, second, I think it's time you produce something a little more uh, artful. Uh, so, uh, you're saying, Agnes, if I, uh, I give up the, uh, slasher flicks and do something more artful, you'll, uh, shut up and go away? Uh, it depends on what you mean by artful. <laughs> you know, I hear the Galactic Tatler is fishing around for an exclusive of my analysis notes. <laughs> How does it feel to be exploited, Manny? <clears throat> uh, Agnes, uh, baby, I just happen to have here a script that is of a rarefied and higher nature. Yeah. Uh, yes, it, it is about the Pope, and <laughs> Manny here has been quite open to his most profound nature. Yeah. Uh, maybe if he agreed to produce it, you would go away and leave him in peace in his golden years. Yeah, maybe. Which Pope, John? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> It was one of the popes back in the days of the Holy Roman Empire, Borgia. <laughs> Never heard of him. What's the point? Ah, uh, Phil, I must say I don't find it very ingratiating of you to discuss my business in uh, public. Oh, Manny. Manny, let me make something clear. I know where you live. <laughs> Lots of people know where I live, sweetie. I'd like to see you try to break in again. You know, I have my own all over you. No, Manny. I mean, I know where you live. I got your genetic zip code in my hip pocket. <laughs> <laughs> How would you like to hear the oral tradition of Manny Gopex, huh? Uh, the what? The oral tradition, you know, shall we start with oral, anal, say, uh, you know, the only difference between oral and anal is the letter N. Uh, what about the A? Oh, well, yeah, an A can sometimes be mistaken for an O. Now, can't it, Manny? <laughs> Agnes, you're killing me. Did you take your legs off the table? Thank you. Agnes, you're killing me. I was vulnerable. I trusted you. I opened up my innermost secrets to you. And what do you do? You go and you sell it to the rats in the gutter. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give up the slasher flicks. I'll do the art things, but please leave me in peace. Maybe I will. It depends. On what? On what you mean by art. Agnes, Manny, I got your art right here. Phil, give it a rest. <laughs> no, 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 Phil, let's hear it. Wait, what do you got? <clears throat> well, it's a, a screenplay about the, uh, about the, uh, decadence. It's, uh... <laughs> uh, yes, it's, uh, it's about the decadence, voyeurism in particular. Well, Manny knows all about that, don't you, dear? <laughs> of course, I'm not sure voyeurism is all that deleterious compared to the other stuff, but uh, I'm interested. How do you intend to make a statement? Agnes basically intends to show a bunch of sex and perversions. And torture. And torture, and then say, hey, it's uh, sicker to enjoy watching this stuff than it is to do it. <laughs> Why what? Why is it so good to watch them to do? <laughs> I don't know. Why is that, Phil? 
Well, it's because your average voyeur is so chicken shit they can easily be made to feel much guiltier than the people who actually do stuff. In fact, <laughs> it's part of the fun. <laughs> what? No, I think Phil is on to something here. I mean, in your case, Maddie, no. your own guilt allows you to feel morally superior to your perversions. It's like you can be perverted without the conviction of your perversions. <laughs> No. But I don't think this Pope Orgy thing is really art. No, no. I think we need something higher, something ascending, something that people have to reach for that they can come away with a new understanding of their own. Agnes, <laughs> baby, <laughs> you're so naive. You're a virtual pope in the woods. Babe in the woods. Yeah, babe in the woods. I mean, we need to. <laughs> We need to sell tickets, Agnes. Be real. I mean, nobody wants to reach. You know, the best thing you can do is slip in a little message along with a titillation and adrenaline rushes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perversion and delusions of a Hollywood producer. The more than true story. In hardcover with my name on it. <laughs> and that sound, Manny. No, no, Agnes, you don't understand. Uh, it, it needs to work. Or at least the investors need to be able to believe that it will work, not in an art sense, in a money sense. But they don't know, Agnes. Nobody does. So what do they say? They say, you know, okay, uh, what worked in the past? What's it like? Is it like uh, E.T.? Is it like Spartacus? <laughs> See, it has to be like something that's already worked. You know, even if it's already. <clears throat> See, it has to be so like something that's already, that's worked in a money sense. Unless you're talking about direct -to video in which case it can be a piece of crap. Oh, I trust that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this will work. The Pope, Jesus. Agnes, you know, we're not totally at odds on this. Man, you might be surprised to know that I am very, very glad to hear that. You know, all I've ever wanted was for us to be the very best of friends. You know, in all my life, I felt that you have been the person who has been most honest and truthful with me. <laughs> That was under false pretenses. <laughs> Man, that just doesn't matter to me. I mean, you revealed the core of insanity beneath the man you show to others, and I realized that everyone was as crazy as I was. <laughs> or in your case, even more crazy. Thanks a lot. Oh, no, Manny, I thank you. I do. I mean, you brought me back from the brain, baby. You know, I used to be so sensitive. <laughs> I feel I used to take existence so seriously. You wouldn't have believed it. And then, Manny, you showed me what you think of as your true inner being. And I realized <laughs> that it's all some kind of joke. It's all some kind of self resonating yin yang, right, wrong, male, female, ACDC, current, opinionated kind of joke. <laughs> Tell me for it to be otherwise would have been too horrible to even contemplate. <laughs> so, Manny, I do thank you from the bottom of my heart. Phil. What is she talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, Manny. Just forget it. What do you mean, forget it, Phil? Well, it's not going to do any good to get mad. It feels like it's doing some good. <laughs> Man, you are too much. I'm not going to sit here and be insulted. No insult intended, Manny. You helped me. I'm going to help you. Because I know you, baby. I know what you need. You need to redeem yourself in your own eyes by doing something of some significance in a positive, creative sense. And if you do, I'll go away. I will. Fulfill us <laughs> on my back. Okay. <laughs> I'll do it. I can live with it, Agnes. I'll go along with it. I'll do what you're talking about, but not because of your threats. I want you to know that. But you will stop selling those stories to the muckrakers about me in the meantime, right? As long as I am convinced that you are proceeding apace and in good faith on our little project, yes, I will desist from spilling your beans, Maddie. <laughs> All right, then what we need, 
is a story, Agnes. Manny. A story that we both find worthwhile. Manny. I'm not going to do the Pope thing, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Forget the Pope. Later for the Pope, I get something else. <laughs> something, uh, something that I thought was a little too highbrow, a little too aesthetically uh, 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 luminous. Luminous, luminous. Yeah, yeah, but it's good. It's good. It's good. It, I don't know. You know, it could be great art. Uh, only future, future generations can know for sure. O only they can be the judge. Um, I thought of it as sort of being uh, inspiring, but without pretension. Sort of like Amadeus meets angels with dirty faces. <laughs> <laughs> but more current, more vital, more urgent. I, I got a story, Manny, and I want to show it to you before I tell it to you. Uh, this new writer from Seattle, a fucking genius. But I'm jaded, unspoiled. You'll love it. Let's set up a meeting for uh, Monday afternoon and I'll bring it. What's the title? Uh, the title is uh, Mayor. Shit? Its name is Shit? Yeah, yeah, but, it, but it's in French and it's really just a symbol. I mean, it's not a story of cops. I mean, you gotta see it. Now, let's set up a meeting for Monday afternoon. <laughs> yeah, all this good. <laughs> Hello, now it's me. Uh, how do I look for Monday afternoon? No, I'll be in town this weekend. Uh, yeah, put Phil down at uh, Spago's at two o'clock on Monday. Yeah, okay, thanks. Okay, Phil, it'll be a light fruit salad. You either got it or you don't. Manny, Manny, you're a prince. A prince. Agnes? I just don't know what to say. You'll think of something, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phil, by the way, what was said at this table this afternoon, uh... Say no more. Monday, 2 o'clock. Ciao. <laughs> Manny, I don't want you to take this wrong, you know. But I really, I really enjoyed some of our little talks. <laughs> Agnes, could we not go you into know, this? You know, the way of... you look at a woman's legs, upper dress, you know, and the rhythm <laughs> of your breathing would change. <laughs> you think it would stop. <laughs> what was that little phrase you used? Something about a dim whirlpool. A luscious whirlpool of dim. Ah, uh, yes, a luscious whirlpool of dim. It's a lovely phrase, Manny. It touched a chord inside me. You know, I personally have always felt, why look when you can leer? <laughs> go along, you know? So why not make up the best thing you can? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you tell me. I mean, uh, why do people make up uh, hate, war, and suicide, and murder, huh? Why is that? <laughs> they have a limited imagination. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you just forget about it? I mean, you're always coming over here saying, uh, this is what it's like, that's what it's like. Uh, uh, 
It's like a grapefruit inside a cantaloupe or whatever you said. What was that? Uh, it's like a shoe with a sprinkler system. I mean, half the time, I don't even hear what you're saying. It's like, because your explanations, they're sucking the life out of me, you know? Like so, it's, it's, like, it's, like, it's like some incestuous, you know, an acceptance speech, some incestuous award ceremony that nobody ever heard of, like for pump diaphragm design or something. <laughs> oh, gee, look, gee, 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 don't give me the answers to questions I don't have, all right? I mean, what am I going to do with them, huh? I mean, I'm not trying to figure out anything on some kind of, like, cosmic level. I mean, uh, not in words, anyway, you know? But, I mean, Jack, don't you have a curiosity about life? I mean, don't you want to know the truth? The truth? Oh, God. The truth, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. Listen. Okay. Some night, let's say, some night, you come over here and you decided that day that like existence, human existence is like, um, I don't know, like a talking doll, right? You pull the string and it says something. You don't know what it's going to say, but you're reasonably sure it's going to be one of about a dozen odd phrases, right? Because you've heard them all like a thousand. No, you've heard them. A lot of times before, you know? <laughs> None of these little phrases, you know, like these basic little kind of phrases like, Shh! Hi, my name is Gina! Shh! I love you, mommy! Shh! Let's think about it! I mean, none of them is satisfying, you know? And you know, it's not going to say anything new, ever. But you keep pulling that string, interpreting those same dozen phrases over and over again in different ways. You know? What? That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> no, Gina, I mean, let's just say that that's it. That's the truth. Human existence is like a talking doll. And you figured it out. How are you going to know, huh? You wouldn't even know if it was the truth. I mean, the next night you come over here, you'd say, uh, hey, uh, you know, uh, life is like a fart bubble in a jacuzzi, you know? And then where's your truth? I mean, it may as well be a, a pump diaphragm or something. I don't know if it was the truth. I would know. Well, how would you know, Gina? I mean, would the angels sing? Everything would, uh, would fit. Oh. Oh, well, if that's all it takes, then here's your truth, then. Uh, everybody thinks they know why they do the things they do, but nobody does. Or, 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 uh, there is no significance to things outside of the interpretations that we ascribe to them. Now, could you come over to fuck a walk? <laughs> He's so rude. <laughs> well, why did you come? Well, I did come over to be with you, but now I'm upset. <laughs> well, I'm goddamn upset too. I mean, I set this time aside for us to screw, and now we spent the last half hour making ourselves feel bad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so grateful you could pencil me in. <laughs> Do you have any idea what it takes for me to maintain my shabby existence writing? Huh? Yes, I do. You spend about, oh, 45 minutes a day writing little skits about the number five in the letter R for Sesame Street. <laughs> <laughs> you kill me. You know, it takes blood to write about the letter R. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think so? I didn't say anything. <laughs> Look, I'm sure it's rough, Jack. I know, misunderstood artist and all, but Jack, you're so self-absorbed. I mean, for all you know, I could be disaffected as well, Jack. In a real personal way, Jack. In a real rude, disingenuous, overly familiar kind of way, Jack. I could be disaffected, and you wouldn't even notice. Oh, yeah, sure. You'd notice when it was too late. Then everybody would notice. Big deal. No, no. You don't understand. It's like the alphabet. I mean, it's like this letter R. Do you know? Do you know what it takes for me to sit down and write a piece for the letter R? Blood, Gina. It takes blood. Great. Great. Great what? Great what, Gina? It is just uh, great to be of service. <laughs> that is so strange, you know? Like, I had that same thought myself today. It was like totally unrelated to everything else I was thinking about just popped into my head. What? That you should join the postal service. No. <laughs> no. I said. Oh God. Never mind. <laughs> you know. You make me feel.
feel like I should join the Postal Service. That's weird, that's what I said. You know? <laughs> I think I'd make a really good disgruntled employee. Then I could become disaffected, commit some extreme social faux pas, which would lead to further disenfranchisement, ostracism, and ultimately total disempowerment. Yeah. On second thought, maybe you should stay in school, huh? Yeah, you might be right. Maybe I ought to just get pregnant, huh? <laughs> Why not seize the moment, Gina? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, you don't. I mean, it's not like I really always say that. It's just an expression, you know? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things are just expressions. Like, uh, she was just one more victim of a disorienting sense of disaffection. Wait, wait a minute, who said that? Nobody said it. I said it. Yeah, but it's like you were quoting somebody, right? <laughs> I made it up, Jack. Just a uh, cynically clever verbal gambit cast forth from the miasma of disaffection that be the bane of my all too sensitive sensitivities. Oh. Hey. I know what you mean. I mean, me too. I, I, I feel that way too. I mean, me too. It's like, it's like the side of art thing. I mean. How can you say that? Say what? Me too. Yeah, I know how you feel. Me too. You said that. Yes, yeah, so I meant it. God, Jack, you are the only person I know who can sympathize with someone and ignore them at the same time. Gee, you are so human. I mean, I mean, that's what I love about you, you know? You keep me in touch with the gooey core of the human spirit, you know? It's, it's like, it's like uh, I don't know, it's like, like I'm some kind of old curmudgeon hermit, you know, off in the bush somewhere studying bugs, you know, masturbating in my hut at night, you know, leading a life of quiet desperation. And you're like, um, like a pizza delivery person, you know? Who comes to my house, comes to my head by accident, but with exactly the kind of pizza that I have in the body. Well, that's um, interesting, Jack, because you know, I don't think you'll ever know how much I feel like a uh, pizza delivery person when I'm here. Huh? Well, you know, sometimes you're in here, you know, uh, writing or watching TV or something, and all of a sudden, it's like I'm getting my head above water for just a moment, like a, like coming out of a dream, you know? And all of a sudden I look at you and I think, my God, who is this, <laughs> this person in the room? He's an animal. He's, he's beyond an animal. He's uh, an automaton. He's part of some um, coercive, clandestine, cosmic, whirly gig. And, <laughs> and then I look around this damn apartment. It, it's like one of those little scenes that snow when you shake them. <laughs> and then this little, you know, this little voice in my head goes, what the fuck am I doing here? Who is this guy and what am I doing hanging out at his place for, huh? And then you'll comment on the 6 o'clock news. Interrupt my zeitgeist invasion. You'll say something like, you know, Nothing is nothing. And then you'll point at the television and go, you know, Gina, none of this is anything. <laughs> oh, Gina, I love you. No, you're just going to have to figure this out for yourself. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> most of the college bills have gone out. Eventually, they get over all of this. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> carried on the same conversation with each other? <laughs> See, that's what I mean. I mean, it, it's like having the soft center that sets its reality here with me. It's like like one-on-one -on -one with contemporary culture. You know too much, Gina. Now we'll have to kill you. Or perhaps. If Jack here fucks your brains out, you'll get over it, huh? <laughs> I'm not paranoid. I'm irked. Hey, I'm really a sensitive guy, Gina, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. I know your damn macho code. I know you're sensitive guy. You're saying you're a sensitive guy, but what you're implying is, if you weren't so damn sensitive, 
You kicked my ass out of here for being such a, uh, I don't know. What, Jack? What, what? You know damn well. <laughs> what? What? You know, <laughs> I am just so sick of the alphabet. I mean, do you know, do you know what it takes for me to sit down and write something about the letter R, Gina? What? Blood, Gina. It takes blood. And everything has to be so goddamn politically correct. It's driving me fucking crazy. Well, what are you doing writing for kids for if you find life so meaningless anyway? Yeah. Uh, I mean, what should I do? You tell me, what should I do? Well, I mean, why don't you try sending out some of your manuscripts? Huh, I think I might have thought of that once. I mean, uh, why don't I save the postage and play the lotto, you know? I mean, the odds are probably better. <laughs> you are so negative. Not negative, Gina. Don't say realistic. Uh, well, Jack, why do you write then? I, I just write. I mean, that's it. Just write. But it's all meaningless if nobody ever sees it. You are the expert on meeting around here. I leave that to you. <laughs> I don't know why I even bother to come over here. You're obviously not real happy to see me. That is not <laughs> true. I love to see you. I, I'm, I'm filled with passion at the sight of you. The first time I saw you at the mall, didn't I fall down and embrace your knees in front of all those Japanese tourists? Didn't I beg you to go to bed with me? Oh, I felt so sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> you feel sorry for me now? <laughs> Jack, God, you wouldn't even care if I went to bed with you because I felt sorry for you under false pretenses. I mean, what would it matter to you? <laughs> Nothing makes any difference. No, Jim, hey, it would make a difference. Let's go to bed, I'll prove it to you. That's exactly what I mean. What? <laughs> Who knows you're here? Did you tell somebody where I live? Nobody knows. I mean, I never told anybody. Well, maybe it's somebody for you. Uh-uh, you're the only person who knows where I live. Jack, is somebody looking for you? No. Well, the truth now, are you in some kind of trouble? Of course not. Well, I mean, how would I know? You never tell me anything. Hey, I assure you, nobody would be looking for me. Why don't you just answer the door, then? <laughs> <laughs> well, why should I? I don't want to see anybody. Well, it's just not natural <laughs> not to answer the door. <laughs> why would I care? Well, I mean... Don't you want to see who it is? Maybe it's something important. Hey, maybe it's not anybody. Jack, it couldn't be not anybody. Oh, yes, it could, because I'm not going to answer. It's the same thing. <laughs> I can hear you in there. Hey, did you pay the rent? Yes. Well, look, there's somebody out there. I'm going to go see what they want. Oh, I'm not home. I won't talk with anybody. <laughs> Who's there? Uh, my name is Phil Rizzuto. Uh, you don't know me, but uh, could I speak with you for a moment? Hey, Phil, how's the money store? <laughs> the money store? Hey, did he win a prize or something? Uh, that's a different Rizzuto. Look, <laughs> could you open up for a minute? I'd like to talk to you about Kermit Grover. <laughs> yeah, uh, how do you know Kermit Grover? Look, I can't hear you through this door. Could you open up a little bit? Yes. I'm trying to locate Mr. Grover. Does he still live here? Maybe. Why do you want to know? <laughs> well, he sent me a manuscript some years ago, and I wanted to discuss it with him. He sent you a manuscript? What's it called? Uh, Mared. He sent it to me about five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm Kermit Grover. Well! Come on, man. Mr. Grover, it's a pleasure to meet you at long last. Yeah, it has been long. I mean, you're lucky I'm still alive. What agency did you say? My co salute, Mr. Grover. May I call you Kermit? No. I used to use that name. It was just a whim. I mean, now it makes me sick. <laughs> no problem. I understand. Now, uh... Jack. Jack! Jack, your screenplay, Mared. It's deep, Jack, very deep. I have a major player who's expressed an interest in Mary. Yeah? Is, is that the one about the gambler? <laughs> it has been a while, hasn't it? No, it's about the, the teenage nymphomaniac runaway who becomes a nun. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, funny that, isn't it? Um, well, let's have a seat. Uh, may I? <coughs> Well, Jack, 
Prepare to beam up because the moment is at hand. <laughs> With a few minor adjustments, we're going to sell Mared and make us both a ton of money. A ton of money. Now, I loved your screenplay, Jack. You know, it was like true art of a higher order. How much money? <laughs> Five, maybe six figures. It depends on negotiations. But you leave that to me. That's my job. But you see, Jack, we're going to have five minutes, maybe ten at the max, to pitch married to the big boys. And if the pitch is right, I know the property's right. they got to buy it. I just have a few suggestions for some minor changes to the script that will grease the rails to proverbial fame and fortune, Jack. Like what? Well, like the ending, Jack. Well, what happens at the end? She dies, doesn't she? Yeah, Jack, she dies. <laughs> yeah? Well, it doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the story. She dies of an embolism, and it's irrelevant. Uh, it's inconclusive. What do you mean it's inconclusive? She dies. Her last word is mad. <laughs> I expect a, a moral, a climax. Oh. oh, okay. All right, okay. Wait a minute. Okay. Just before she loses consciousness, everybody gives her a standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> what, everybody? Uh, you know, like the other nuns, the townspeople, the Zulus, the Martians. Everybody, the angels, everyone. <laughs> but <laughs> she's alone when she dies, Jack. <laughs> Well, really, Mr. Zero, tell you the truth, I don't remember that script very well. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm not changing a word of it. <laughs> but I don't understand. Look, you like the script? Oh, Jack, I loved it. It, it was perfect. It's, uh, you know, I just wanted to get the best chance that it possibly can. It's virtually sold, $2, but... $2,500. What? Well, you said it's worth five, maybe six figures, right? I'll sell it to you for $2,500. You can change anything you want to. <laughs> Well, that, that's a very interesting offer, Jack. But you see, this is how it works. Uh, I'm an agent, not a producer. I don't buy properties. I just sell them for other people. Well, do you have a contract with you? Yeah. OK, well, what will you give me for that screenplay? Oh. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I could offer you for it as an individual. <laughs> I don't want to insult you. Insult me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, $78? <laughs> so, <laughs> would you take a check on that? Would you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've only got $63 in cash. Close enough. I know. In that case, Jack, you have a deal. If you would just sign here. Jack, don't. Add initial over here. And one more signature over here on the bed. Well, I mean, if that's it, I'm really very busy. You know what I mean? Say no more, Jack. I am gone. I'd just like to say, Jack, that it's been a pleasure doing business with you. <laughs> I admire your artistic integrity. Hmm. Jack, why'd you do that? Oh, hey, it was a clever ruse. But you know, he said but your story was art. Gee, nah. I'm not an artist. I knew I'm that. A philosopher. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that. I think maybe it was the uh, Sesame Street thing that threw me off. <laughs> so, see, an artist, he looks at life, you know, he addresses life. He says, What do you mean? A philosopher, he looks, he says, what do you mean, what do you mean? <laughs> I think you got way too much free time. <laughs> I have a lot of work to do on this capital R thing for Friday. I mean, we got 45 minutes now. I mean, do you want to do it or what? I don't think I like the way you treat me. Gina, what, are you kidding me? I <laughs> 
Can't you tell? I mean, I'm mad about you. I mean, what, what do you want? What do you want? Huh? Do you want me to, uh, to fling myself out the window? Just say the word. <laughs> Drive my car into a wall? Hand me the keys. No, I do not want you to fling yourself out the window. Well, what then? Well, I just want, I, I don't know. <laughs> Listen, all you're thinking about is just come over here, OK? Mm. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Ten minute break and then we'll reconvene uh, Spago's Monday afternoon around two-ish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Agnes, our flight leaves at two o'clock. Manny! Agnes? No. Manny, this lady's gonna go down as a personal legend in the GoPet Chronicles, I promise you. Uh, I'm working with you, Bill. Let's see it. It's about a young woman's fault in race. <laughs> it's moving up lately. A teenage runaway search for me and her ultimate transcendence of the self-centered, indulgent existence that she had fallen into. And it's titled Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Uh, the title is wrong. I was thinking that myself. I was thinking more like uh, Sex, Blood, and Epiphany. <laughs> uh, it, it's a tight little drama, but riveting, riveting. Sort of like Reservoir Dogs meets Shoes of the Fisher. <laughs> Man, this property is so fine, so perfect you, for you, that I'm going to be working personally with the author on any uh, revisions that you might need. Yeah. Manny, why don't we take it with us and I can read it while we're away. Where are you off to? Uh, <coughs> well, uh, Burma, Phil. Uh, <laughs> Agnes and I flew out to uh, Las Vegas over the weekend and got married, so... Uh, <laughs> so the honeymoon is about to continue. Manny, Agnes, I, I'm stunned. Uh, well, to tell you the truth, Phil, I'm kind of stunned myself. <laughs> you know, I, I can't explain it, I just knew it was right. <laughs> well, you know, a lot has happened since we talked on Friday. I, I can imagine. Well, uh, you know, Phil, I appreciate your discretion regarding Agnes and myself. You know, I wouldn't have seen anyone else on my way to Burma. Huh? I mean, I rely on your continued good faith. Uh, don't give it another thought. Honey, this reads really well. It's engaging right from the first page film. Now, who is this Kermit Grover? <laughs> I know I've heard the name. <clears throat> well, well, Agnes, uh, uh, if I'd have only known, uh, congratulations, by the way. Yeah, yeah. It, it is engaging. It's, uh, the storyline here is so dynamic. It, it's like a, a roller coaster ride through the human condition. And the possibility of getting to that last hill <laughs> And you just keep going up. The triumph of an ascendant spirit that is birthed in the mire of the worst aspects of America's cultural decadence and ambivalence. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, uh, we'll take it with us. If Agnes likes it, we'll do it. Agnes, you must have made quite an impression. <laughs> impression? <laughs> Phil, I can't convey. I mean, we were eating snacks from another dimension. <laughs> we were wearing the footwear of the gods. It was like a room with a view. Phil, I can't begin to tell you. And now that we're married, I don't think I will. <laughs> Baby, I told you I know what you need. <laughs> Manny, Agnes, you know, I, I just love to give you a couple of weeks to peruse this script, but I'm uh, being pressured by the agency. You know, there are other parties. Uh, they want to move on this, Manny. They're ready to sign. Phil, Phil, Phil. Truth, honest to God, truth, Manny. You know, I was thinking that we'd do the Pope thing, but I took Marin and I pitched it to Ryan last week, and uh, they want to meet, Manny. It is compelling, Manny. Manny, this property is so hot, so viable. I shouldn't tell you this, but I personally bought an option on it. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, you're kidding. 
I swear, I picked up a 12-month option at 63 and consider it a steal. <laughs> what do you say, Phil? Well, <clears throat> Manny, I want to move on this because personally I'm heavily extended. <laughs> I'm willing to sell you my option for 75000 to cover my expenses, plus five points. But, you know, I hate from my heart to say this to you, Manny. I need a decision now. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Sure. Let's say you buy a lotto ticket and, you know, the jackpot is way up there, like a hundred million or so. Yeah. Yeah. And Monday morning, you look in the paper and... And I won. Yeah, you won. How do you feel? Well, I feel like a million bucks. Uh, <clears throat> no better than that. I feel like a hundred million bucks. But uh, what's the point? Yeah, you feel great because all of a sudden, all the moves and struggles you're currently involved in, it's like they become moot. You know, you can't take them seriously anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, say, there's somebody at the office you don't get along with, you know. <laughs> It's like, you know, you're always involved in petty power struggles with them. You know, you walk in in the morning, you look at their face, you want to throw up, you want to change profession. <laughs> I can relate to that. Yeah, no doubt. But now you can't take it seriously anymore. You've got better things to dwell on, yeah? That sounds right. Yeah. Well, Monday, you drive over to pick up your money, and you find out they made a mistake. They printed the wrong number, Phil, and you didn't win anything. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> Agnes, uh, I know you're going somewhere with this. Uh, you know, take me to the bridge. Bring it on home. <laughs> what's changed? What? So what's changed? One minute you're invincible, the next you're in the pits. Hmm? What's the difference? What's changed? <laughs> One minute, I got a hundred million smackers and the next zilch. What do you mean, what's changed? Oh, no, Phil, you never had any money. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought I had the money. I was operating under the pretense that I had the money. Um, I don't get your point. It's just a natural reaction. Well, it's because now you feel like you have to take all the conditions of your life seriously again. But I would, baby. Really? Agnes. You know, I can see that this is due for some heavy consideration. I you, I'm going to think about this long and hard, but right now, I got a million things on my mind. Manny? Uh, yeah, Bill, what's this here on the last page? She says, uh, shit and dies. <laughs> no, 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 no. That, that's been changed. Read, read what's written in the margin back there. <laughs> <laughs> she hears a uh, uh, heavenly choir as she speeds through a dark tunnel toward an ineffable light amidst the applause of thousands. Yeah, yeah! <laughs> it's her moment of epiphany. You see, she's dying, but then she doesn't. A near-death experience. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and she comes back, <laughs> and we fade to a lingering shot of the joy on her face, knowing that the hint of the beatific that she glimpsed while admired in her own personal hell of debauchery, <laughs> which we will illustrate graphically in the first 97% of the day, <laughs> was true. <laughs> that she was right to believe in the force beyond the mundane trappings of everyday existence. That... It was all worth it. Oh, uh, uh, make it two and you got a deal. Manny, I got 63 of my own funds in this. I had to take out a second mortgage. <laughs> Three. Deal. I'll change the points. Just sign here. Okay, Phil, gotta go. Manny, you're a great soul of the industry. Agnes, once again, Leave me speechless. <laughs> Think about what I said, Phil. What? <laughs> oh, yeah, the lotto thing. Right, yeah. It's due for some consideration. <laughs> there is without a doubt. Ciao. 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 <laughs> Bam. Woo. Baby. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Ooh, Kermit. <laughs> Betty? Yeah, it's me. Yeah, I'd like you to uh, draft a check for $10,000 to Kermit Grove. That's right. Yeah, you'll, you'll find his address in my slush pile list. <laughs> Thanks, Betty. Oh, Betty, yeah, I won't be in tomorrow. But I'll call. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, Betty. Yeah, about that draft at Kermit Grove. Yeah, forget it. Yeah, cancel the draft. <laughs> thanks. Talk to you later. That crazy bitch in her lotto store. Think about it. Think about this, Agnes. <laughs> Think about it. Yo, Juanita, a pitcher of frozen margaritas over here, please. <sighs> well, you certainly are in high spirits. Agnes, uh, I thought you were way on your way to uh, 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 Belize, uh, uh, b b b Borneo, uh, Burma. Burma. God, I hope you didn't miss your flight. Right, Phil. Why don't you knock off the ship? What? You, Phil. You're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. You bet my pardon. I'd like to see this contract, please. May I? <sighs> Agnes? Agnes, baby, what, what, what are you doing? What, what have I done? You tell me, Phil, because I'm dying to find out. What? Find out what? Where's Manny? He's out in the car, making a few calls, changing our reservations. But, but why? What, what, what is this all about? It's about Kermit Grover, Phil. Tell me about Mr. Grover. Who is he? He's this writer from Seattle, a, a genius, a genius, but uh, unjaded, unspoiled by the scene. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, a, a spiritual sort. He's, uh, you know, reclusive. He lives for his art. He doesn't even answer the door. You, you know the type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we hadn't gotten half a block from here when I realized who Kermit Grover is. He's just who I said he is, Kermit Grover. No, Phil. Kermit Grover is two Muppets on Sesame Street. <laughs> Kermit the Frog and Grover the, uh, whatever he is, you know? <laughs> well, I didn't realize that, but I I've been meaning to change that anyway. He told me he doesn't use that name anymore. Oh? <laughs> and what name does he use? Jack. <laughs> Jack. <laughs> Jack what? I don't know. He never told me his last name. Oh, so you uh, made out a check for $63,000 to Jack. Or maybe just to cash, huh? <laughs> Agnes, honey, I thought you liked the script. I love the script. Well, that's all that counts, isn't it? I mean, it's a great work of art. It's the kind of moving, gut-wrenching drama oh, that the American... Oh, the shit, Phil. Oi, <laughs> <laughs> I'm developing a very strong suspicion that something is fishy here. Well, I understand that, Agnes, and I respect it. Because I respect you, Agnes. I mean, you know, before you came into Manny's life, I mean, you know, I think that your relationship has been of a great benefit to him. Do you now? Really? Well, that's good, Phil, because it seems to me you could do with a little nurturing yourself. No! Agnes, you... You read me like a book, uh, nurturing. You know, yeah. I can't remember the last time that I've been nurtured in any meaningful way. Yeah, you mean that you didn't have to pay for by the trick. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Agnes, baby, I surrender. I see that I have no secrets from you. Phil. Agnes. Don't fucking call me baby anymore. Okay, okay, sorry.
I'm curious, Phil. About what? You know, when we were leaving, I was standing over there waiting for a couple to go, and I couldn't help overhearing you call your office and order a check for $10,000 to Kermit Grove and then cancel it. What was that all about? Yeah, well, well, that was, uh, you see, I was so overwhelmed because of the joy, because of this deal we have, that uh, that uh, I wanted to give Kermit, uh, I mean Jack, a bonus too. And then I realized that uh, this was probably a little too generous of me. I mean, you know, my points, they could be worth millions. I have no doubt that they will be. Manny's a genius, but, well. but anyway, if... Uh, <laughs> if it didn't go that way. Not that I doubt that it will, but if it didn't, then uh, I would only make two grand on the deal and uh, Jack would make 73. So, uh, yeah, it's the thought that counts, right? Agnes, Agnes, I, uh, I changed the reservations to 8 o'clock. Uh, so what's this all about, huh? Manny, I have the feeling that Phil here has not been entirely forthcoming with us. Ah. Uh, I don't see what the big deal is. I mean, uh, we're just talking about an uh, ends and means thing here, right? I mean, life is too short. It's only business as usual. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Manny. Life is too short. So why don't we just call this Jack person up, and that way I can alleviate my suspicions. We can be on our way. Suspicions? Agnes, ba Agnes, yeah. what could there be to be suspicious of? What could there possibly be? Thou protesteth too much. Kill <laughs> him. Call him up. Yeah, Phil, uh, God damn it, call him up. Manny, I would if I could, but I can't because the man does not have a phone. Phil, can I tell you something? What? <laughs> you know, uh, I don't like to be jacked around, Phil. You know how I got the money to start my practice in Carmel? <laughs> you know I was in a state facility, don't you, Phil? I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, every year I got a letter from Ed McMahon telling me I was a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> and I never saw any money. This guy was jacking me around. I was getting very very upset. <laughs> so I found out where he lives and I bust out of there and I go over to his house and I break in and I put a gun to his head. Phil. And he gave you a million dollars? No, but he gave me 46000 he had in a wall save and he apologized profusely for upsetting me so much. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and I can see you just don't understand. Understand what? That civilization, <laughs> morals and all, it's just a toaster cozy. Yes. A what? A toaster cozy. You know, one of those fuzzy things little old ladies crochet <laughs> to keep their toaster warm at night. <laughs> Agnes. <laughs> Still, you gotta respect that, right? I mean, I'm talking about a, you know, where's my money? You put a gun to his head. I love it. <laughs> Go ahead and call him. I swear, Manny, the man does not have a phone. Oh, well, we'll just have to pay him a visit then. You do know where he lives, don't you, Phil? Yeah, I do. But he probably won't answer the door. <laughs> <laughs>
big R. <laughs> Capital R. Artie, <laughs> Artie, the big R, <laughs> arranged an artesian well. <laughs> he argued with Aristotle, whose ire was aroused by the R on Artie's arts. <laughs> I will join the Coast Guard, no, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll sell shoes. That's going too far. Uh, I'll go back to high school and get my GED. Uh, uh, this is a catastrophe, a fucking nightmare. Ah! 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 Jack, Jack, how wonderful to see you again. Hey, ah! Terrific ah! news. Th these artists, who, who are we to judge? Yes, <laughs> I am an artist. An artist! Do you know what it takes to be an artist? Blood. Blood! That's right. <laughs> now leave or I'll have you arrested. Except for you. <laughs> you can stay. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> Agnes, Agnes, but... Um, Agnes, uh, I think we can straighten this all out now. As you can see, there is a Jack. Right, Jack? Wrong. I used to use that name. Now <laughs> it makes me sick. <laughs> well, what is your name? Uh, uh, Arturo. No, no, no. Uh, uh, Ronaldo. It's derivative, but somehow it's new. It's fresh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ronaldo? Yes, I'll name myself Ronaldo and make a new life. I could do it. I'm still a young man. Uh, Ronaldo, uh, Agnes and Manny here have come to tell you uh, how much they enjoy your screenplay. Cool it, Phil. What screenplay? Uh, Mayard. You know, I have had it up to here with Mayard. You bought it. It's your Mayard now. <laughs> uh, Phil, uh, Ronaldo, is it? Yeah, right. Uh, that's kind of an unusual attitude for an artist to have about his work, isn't it? <laughs> Today, I'm an artist, right? Next Wednesday, I'm a cutist, but actually, I'm more like a slave. Yes, a snake leading those millions of innocent young tykes out of paradise with the promise of a better life through literacy and the magic of a 60 hertz refresh rate on their personal cathode ray tubes. <laughs> to what depths you have fallen. Ronaldo. Uh, what are you talking about, Ronaldo? Uh, I'm talking about Passion and the letter R. Not just any R, but big R. Big R is much more passionate than a regular R. Big R stands tall. It demands attention. It's like a little R with the heart on. And I have to remember that E will be coming around before I know it. Erection. Oh, God! I am just so sick of the alphabet. <laughs> Passionately so. Would you have to admit, it's better than watching Geraldo. Geraldo. I'm Agnes Bloodle. Agnes Bloodle. And this is Manny Gopex, and we're interested in producing your merit. Manny Gopex, where have I heard that name before? Uh, you no doubt have heard of uh, Teenage Slumber Sex Predator uh, 1 through 17. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you're interested in Mare. It's your genre, right? <laughs> oh, well, <here> I go. <laughs> forgive me, forgive me. Who am I to talk after all? Sex and violence, sex and blood, they're quite intimately intertwined. <laughs> Thanks to our good friend, ha, Generalissimo Tito Testosterone. <laughs> it's one of my favorite subjects in Manny's, too. <laughs> Agnes, please. Oh, Manny, don't be humble. I mean, in this day and time, not everyone can afford to live the dream. <laughs> Agnes, I'm a changed man, changed to the core. You opened up my eyes. Yeah, well, I opened up something, Manny, but I don't think it was your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack, you got visitors? Oh, hi, Mr. Rizzuto. Back to steal another screenplay? Dr. Bloodle! <laughs> Gina! Wow! Gina, baby! Oh, God, it's so good to see you. Let me look at you. It's what are you so doing long. here? This is unbelievable. Yeah. This is amazing. Because this is Jack. 
I always wanted the two of you to meet. This is that up. Oh, yes it is. Gina, yes. I've heard so much about you. Glad to meet you. Uh, no, uh, yeah. uh, wait a minute. She was your psychiatrist too? Well, no, I mean, well, it's a long story. We always used to meet in the park and talk about stuff. Yeah. You know, Dr. Bloodle, it's kind of like a um, pet name to me and my friends. Yeah. When we were in high school, she used to help us out with our problems. Yeah, I'd bring them some of my Valium and they'd bring me nickel bags of pot. Then when they disappeared, we never saw her again. Yeah. I am so happy to see you. I'm so excited you're here. Just this morning, uh, Jack and I, we were talking about questions, and I said, God, I wish Dr. Bloodle was here. She'd understand. Didn't I, Jack? Gee, I have renamed myself Ronaldo and changed my life. Yes, you said that. Um, <laughs> you know, Dr. Bloodle, uh -huh. I think I've come upon a really important question. I had this dream. It's a dream of a universe without life. Oh, maybe it was before life. <laughs> Gina, do you think there was a before life? See? You do understand about the important stuff. But, oh God, I'm so glad you're here. But the scientists, they say there was a before life. And well, somehow life evolved from non-life. The scum. <laughs> wow. What, what are they talking about, Phil? <laughs> I don't know. It uh, seems to me like they're uh, philosophizing. I assure you, we are not philosophizing. The very belief that such a thing is possible precludes the possibility. <laughs> They're doing it again. <laughs> Definitely philosophizing. What do you mean, Dr. Blue? Well, it's like if you can ask the question, you can't answer it. It's too late. You've already traded the answer for the question. The question. That's what I was telling Jack, uh, I mean Ronaldo, about this morning. The question. <laughs> <laughs> See how she indulges me. She calls me Ronaldo when I'm reading. Hey, Agnes is no slacker. She bears me snacks from another dimension. <laughs> Actually, we were just married, you know. Oh, really? <laughs> then we must celebrate. Would you like a drink? Actually, yes. <laughs> That's how it seems to us, doesn't it? That something must come from something else. If you've given up the answer to have the question. <clears throat> Well, Gina, only the most lascivious can become virgins a second time. <laughs> Excuse me. It's fortuitous, isn't it, life? I think it is, yes. So fortuitous. And it moves so quickly through us. How about one of those beers? You're not saying that life is too short. No. <laughs> and you don't think that life evolved out of inanimate matter? Sesame Street. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Mine, no. I understand that some find the concept comforting, but uh, no, I rather think that the life here within us all is more a thing unto itself and an extremely fortuitous thing. Yeah, it uh, seems to have its own plan, its own agenda. Like I was talking with Jack this morning. Progress, civilization, all that human culture, it's moved so quickly. It almost seems like uh, some extremely fortuitous event into which some supreme opportunist is playing pain. Like a genetic poker game. Yeah, yeah, it's like um, civilization is this extremely rare hand that life's dealt itself. So it decides to bet a whole bunch of its chips and raise the stakes. I tell you, I'm a change man, all the time. <laughs> scientists call that genetic drift. What a beautiful term, genetic drift. Well, what's it drifting in? Time? Perhaps an eternity of its own making. Maybe time is the space of genetic drift. Gina, why don't you and uh, Ronaldo come to Burma with us? Could you? Yeah, maybe we'll put the bill. Don't worry, he'll insist. Oh, I could. I mean, I'm in between <laughs> semesters. Hey, Ronaldo. Agnes wants us to go to Burma with her and me. Huh? Yeah, and Ronaldo, they have beautiful beaches. <laughs> I have named myself Ronaldo and changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> my heart is filled with the uh, enticement of the moon sodden shores. <laughs> I stand prepared to be poured. Just well, like uh, good then. Uh, I guess we'll uh, head out and we'll discuss Mayor or your uh, 
concept of its style. Yeah, yeah, come on. We gotta stop by Gina's house first. To get let's get those purple slippers. Right. Then we'll go to the airport and get a meal or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, So come back. <laughs> There's a mail sign mailing list. Here. If you'd like to sign it on your way out as well, and uh, keep informed of future activities. Uh, I'd like to thank Dave for doing lights. We got Joe on video, uh, Pete on sound, Derek as well on video. Uh, ben and Robert have done the fantastic uh, artwork in the set here. So thanks everybody, and thank you especially for coming. Out. Thanks.